Testing, testing. One, two, three. It's your gal, Julie Berry. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Hi guys, it's been a while. How are we? I'm gonna turn the music down a bit. Hi Pepper, MT, and Blueberry. Hello. I'm scared to turn the music down. There we go. How are we? Oh my goodness. Hello, hello. Happy Sunday. Happy SBI Sunday. Oh, Clover. Thank you so much for the resub. Oh my goodness. And uh, yo, thank you so much for the hydrate. I got a little bit of water in here left over, so. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh my goodness. <gasps> Hello, best day of the week, Pinterest. Let's go! Oh my goodness, and uh, Via Rotea, thank you so much for the follow. Sorry if I totally bad butchered your name. And Nani's hello, and Teal, hello. Oh my goodness. I know I said in my Discord that we were gonna do uh, chapters 20 and 21 reading of the Golden Phoenix, but unfortunately, uh, Kit has not answered my DMs. I messaged her at 4 and. We, we planned ahead, but do not be mad at Kit at all. I'm sure she has something going on. She's a very busy gal, and we love them very much. So hearts in chat for Kit. Hearts in chat for Kit, please. Um, I'm a little worried about her because she didn't answer my DMs. So uh, <laughs> we're going to go ahead and continue with reading some Sir Cantus fix. Um, this is actually going to be helpful for me because this story has been open in my tabs. You want to know? Thank you for drinking water. Oh, <laughs> A, I get it. Um, where is it? How many tabs do I have open? 109. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. So, yes, this is just gonna take one right off of my. Oh my god, Drew, whenever you talk about Kit, I go, that name says, I didn't realize I met. Yeah, you literally met Kit. You literally met Kit. They were the one with the sunglasses and the mask. Um, but also, we hit 1.4k. So now the next goal is 1.5. Very exciting, very cool. Yippee! So, okay, the fic that we're gonna be reading is called A Crown of Love. It's by Sir Cantus. Um, so if anyone's brave enough to ping at Marcus, maybe maybe they'll join. I don't know. I'm a big fan of Sir Cantus, so that'd be pretty poggers. Cause I know um I tweeted at them like a couple months ago. And they're like, yeah, I don't care if you read, like, my fix on stream. Um, please don't make me feel sick. <laughs> Aw, take care of your immune system, bestie. You're doing amazing. Um, but oh my goodness. I, I'm currently reading the newest chapter of Change Fate by Being Aggressively Kind. And that fic has been with me since, like my junior year like ever since like eight chapters were out so oh my goodness change fate is one of my all-time favorite fix ever hello general buddy bear welcome welcome all right did change fate update yeah i love my building the spell grammarly yeah change fate updated a couple days ago it's now on chapter oh not the mario kart coconut mall 28 chapters so this was my first SBI fic, dude. It's so good. It's literally one of my all-time favorites. Ugh. Uh, we got the messy bun in with my my butterfly clip. Also, I got cereal. Julie, if someone nice shrank to a tiny size, do you keep them, and would you smile or frown at them if you saw them in your favorite food? I would probably s smile, but not in a way that I'm gonna eat them. I know, that's why I'm streaming now, so I can watch The Last of Us later. Did you hear that call me what you like with Lovejoy got leaked on TikTok? That's terrible. Not the leaks, dude. Unless it's leaked on purpose by the creator. Yeah, sure, but like, if you're not the creator and you leak something, shame on you. Shame, shame. But I'm excited to get get into it. Yee uh, it is like, honey, I shrunk the kids' cereal scene. You see them at the last time. Oh my goodness, that that movie kind of scared me when I was a kid. Like, the giant ant. Like, the, the insect. Ooh. Couldn't do it. 
I want some extra sweet tea. They think you can eat them to give you a scare. Yeah, literally. Literally. I have my cinnamon toast crunch right here without milk. I eat it dry. Because I fear no man. All right. Y'all want to put on the lore music? I haven't even... Hi, Violet. I've never read... I haven't read this fic. So I'm super excited to see what it's about. If you ate it dry, they might have a chance of getting your attention. True. Because milk, you, you can't see through milk. Jay's lore playlist. Okay. I'm super excited. I'm super excited for this fic because I have not read it. Let's hope it's on the right tab. Yeah, it is. All right, I went ahead and I muted alerts. Um, so go feel free to talk some amongst yourself in the chat. It's gonna be super fun. All right. Okay, there is a next work. Okay, so we might be able to read them both. Okay, let's go ahead and read the tags. Uh, alternate, it's a royalty AU, Warlord Technoblade, Tommy and eccentric, hurt comfort, kinda, I mean, I think. Implied slash reference character death, adoption. Oh, I think this is a techno dad fic. Anyways, Bedrock Bros wins. Uh, <laughs> Technically doesn't have a heart, but that's okay. Tommy will be his. Tommy is his humanity. He's also his accidental son, but eh. One shot, dark techno blade. So if you feel triggered by any of this, um, feel free to step away and take care of yourself. I'm, I usually don't read a lot of like dark SBI fits, unless I have, I probably have, but knowing Sir Cantus, it's probably okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's see the word count. We got 3.2K. It's a one shot. What the? Thanks Grammarly for appearing there all of a sudden. You love dark SBI? Yeah, some of them, a lot of dark SBI fics are hit or miss. Um, but, you know, it, d it depends on, like, you know, what you like. But, yeah. I really like this angle of where my hair is going today. Have you read B's newest work? No, I haven't. Because I've been reading a lot of My Hero Academia fanfics. Because that is my new current hyperfixation. Uh, but that doesn't mean that I love SBI any less. Y'all know me. Y'all know me. This is, this is my thing. This is the thing. Depends on how dark. Okay, we know you. <laughs> Okay, but why do I actually like Dark SBI? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I get it, Pepper. It's like that feeling of, like, you know, when, like, they love Tommy so much that it's like, man, why don't I have that, you know? But, of course, my family... My family's fine. Like, I'm, 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 I'm safe. It's like, sometimes you just kind of want that... Attention, I guess? I don't know. But I'm excited to read this. I'm excited to see what Sir Kent is. Mr. Marcus Sir Kent is has in store. <clears throat> A Crown of Love by Sir Kentis. It's because I'm touch starved. That is a big mood right there, Blueberry. That is a big mood. Tommy approaches the king directly, standing right in front of him. Up close from here, Tommy feels impossibly small. He has to tilt his head back up to look at this man and the king stares down at him with a ghost of a smile, like he's amused at the fact that they're so far in terms of height. His young hands lift up a wooden box. The king stares at it with disinterest, but he takes it when Tommy shoves it forward, almost hitting it into his armor. Holding it in the palm of one hand, the king undoes the latch and lifts the lid. He pauses. Inside that box sits a woven crown made of fresh yellow flowers. Shudders and passerin. <laughs> Or Technoblade is taking over the world, conquering kingdoms one by one, and Tommy is a young, newly crowned king who's waiting for him to arrive, with a gift of appeasement in hand. Hey, yo? Okay, Warlord Technoblade, I see you. <coughs> Tommy doesn't know what to call the man riding up to him. It's debatable on if this man can be called a mortal man at all, but Tommy still knows his manners. He remembers his lessons, those boring mornings with the teacher droning on as he stared off towards the window, wishing that his father would come home and free him from hell. Lesson after lesson, telling him of manners and way to speak and how to hold himself so that he'd make the kingdom proud. 
It feels like it's been centuries since those lessons. Tommy doesn't feel like he's making anyone proud. He can feel the sorrow floating in the air, the guilt pooling at his feet, the pity sinking upon his back. All eyes are on him, one way or another, and you can feel their hearts with their stares. His crown is heavy on his head, but it's still too small. He is too small. He is their king, newly crowned, but he is not a good king. He is a young one, an impulsive one, a naive one, but not a good one. Maybe that's why he's forgotten how to address the man riding up towards his kingdom's walls. His advisors have told him before about this man. He goes by so many names. Tommy can't remember which ones are offensive and which ones are given with pride. The Blood God. Oh wait, I read that wrong. The God of Blood. The Blade. The Red-Eyed King. The Crimson Emperor. So many titles. All with one message that rings true. He is a dangerous man. Tommy knew he was coming. His advisors and his knights and his people all knew he would come. It's told much like a prophecy, although it would be better suited as a sort of... <laughs> as a sort of nightmare, in Tommy's opinion. Here approaches a conqueror who seeks for the world in his hands. Here comes a warlord who's burnt cities and killed rulers for the sake of having every last man swear to him and him alone. Here comes a monster, a sword at his hip to get close and have Tommy join those dead kings. Tommy waits and watches the armies approach. He stands still. He's given his orders for his people to not, to not struggle, and he prays to all the gods that they will listen. He can't lose any more people. If, he's, if he is to be lost, then at the very least, let his life be the last one taken from his lands. Today, on this sunny, warm day, the King of War will find another piece of land to add to his empire. Tommy will give it freely, no argument or fight to be given. With it, he will also give this wooden box in his hands. It is a precious bargaining gift. His guards look upon it with interest and desperation, because while they stand tall and protective around him, they can't stop him when he leaves their side. Whatever is in the box will be the gift of appeasement. And while this man is not someone who can be appeased, the people hope that their young king can do the impossible. You may be a tyrant, but found family always wins. Found family always wins! Exactly. Exactly. Tommy isn't sure he'll manage to see the next sunrise, but he hopes this gift will be enough. His advisors suggested for him to give more, like jewels and swords and such, but Tommy thinks that's stupid advice. This man has taken almost half the world for himself. He has all the riches he could ever want. All Tommy can do here is give something that is most valuable to himself. Finally, after what seems like eternity, the armies find their place and stand still. They surround the gates entirely, the walls and the land and everyone around Tommy begins to grow ap apprehensive. They shuffle their feet, give quick glances of concern, and Tommy ignores them all. He stares ahead, a small wooden box in his hands, and he still wonders what he's supposed to call this man. The horses ride up at the easy- ah, sorry, let me take that, let me try again. This is the dose of SBI need to get back into the gym and simply groove. Hey, whatever floats your boat, Violent. Whatever floats your boat. The horses ride up at, it at an easy trot. They stop a short distance away, and the people on them climb off. They don't move until the man at the front, at the front does. And when he does, it is like death itself coming near. He walks slowly, not quite confident, not quite nervous, just bored. Like this entire ordeal is nothing more than a chore. Like taking a surrendering kingdom into the palm of his hand is a tedious part of his day. Tommy squeezes his hands at the edges of the wooden box, feeling it dig against his skin. He's heard stories about this man. He's heard of the blood he's spilt and the wars he's started. He's heard of the swords he's stolen and the warriors he's killed. He's heard of the armies he's created and the armies he's crushed. This is not a man. This is a monster, hidden in a human body, greedy and evil and dangerous. And Tommy is here to offer him a gift for the survival of his kingdom. Sheesh! God damn, he's on Twitter? Fuck, crazy. Who'd have thunk? It's because I have her notifications on, that's why. <laughs> 
Hello, Tommy calls out, and he can hear his people shift around him, uneasy at the lack of proper speech. Tommy doesn't care at this point. Is he not meant for death anyway? Let him speak freely if these are the last words he gets to speak. The king and his men come to a stop, standing across from Tommy and his own guards. Tommy can't figure out the expression on the king's face. That boredom seems to have dissolved away into a look of intrigue. Yeah, that's right. But it could also just be a calculating face. The man thinking of ways for Tommy to be executed. It's hard to tell, especially since Tommy's attention keeps drifting away from the king's eyes and towards the jagged scars on his skin instead. Across his nose, up his cheek. You've come a long way, Tommy continues. Was the journey rough? He's asking this too personally, as if he's speaking to an old friend rather than an enemy. He can't help it. His heart is aching too harshly with emotion, and he's feeling sentimental to kindness in these last minutes of being alive. His people around him lower their heads with both grief and fondness. If there is anything Tommy was known for when he was still a prince, it was for his habit to try and befriend even the most terrible of things. Hi, Jenny. How are you? Once when Tommy was six, he had come across a snake in the gardens, big and green and angry, with a bit of chicken from the kitchens and a relentless persistent at chasing, it, chasing after it through the leaves of the bushes. Tommy had managed to carry it in his arms and take it all the way to his father, who then looked with horror when Tommy held up the creature and declared it to be his new friend. Now Tommy is 13. He doesn't think he can make a bloodthirsty warlord tolerate him as the snake did. But there is nothing he can do other than at least try. The king gives no answer to Tommy's question, only a raise of his eyebrows and a curious look. Tommy doesn't mind. He holds up the box. I have a gift to offer you, he says, raising his chin high and forcing his voice to keep steady. But I want something in return. Then it's not a gift then, is it? It's a trade, the king answers, and whatever neutral emotion there was on his shoulders, it's gone now. Now he looks annoyed, frustrated at even being told what he should be <laughs> frustrated at even being told that he should give something over. A cold rush of fear washes down Tommy's ribs, and he bites his tongue to keep his jaw from shaking. Tell me what you want. I'm good, can't complain because I'm watching you now. Oh sh Stop. Y'all are too nice. Oh my gosh, my song Venus is playing. Oh, this is my favorite. I want the slight music in the background. There we go. Tommy nods. He brings the box back to him, pressing it against his chest. He steps forward, away from the guards at his side. The men at the king's side immediately take the, hand the handle of their swords, a clear warning, but the king waves them off. Tommy is grateful. I want my people to be spared, he says, holding this wooden box close. I, I want you to take good care of them and keep them safe. I want you to keep Worf away from these walls so that the lives inside stay peaceful. I want you to be a good ruler to them, no matter what. Silence drags for a long moment. The sorrow in the air is suffocating and Tommy feels like he's going to choke on it and devolve into sobs heaving, wailing sobs, so harsh that he'll fall to his knees with it, his voice crying out for a father who's already sealed away in the tombs. Oh, that's sad. <laughs> Orphan moment. The king makes a near sigh. Tommy can't tell what it means. That's a heavy trade. I don't think whatever is in that box will be enough. He looks down at the wood directly, at Tommy's hands holding it tightly and Tommy resists the urge to hold it out and demand that the man take it. He doesn't give an answer to the king. He just walks forward, with purpose and with terror, his people watching him and praying silently for the gods to intervene. Tommy approaches the king directly, standing in front of him. Up close, from here, Tommy feels impossibly small. He has to tilt his head back to look up at this man, and the king stares down at him with a ghost of a smile like he's amused at the fact that they're so far in terms of height. His young hands lift up a wooden box. The king stares at it with disinterest, but he takes it when Tommy shoves it forward, almost hitting it into his armor. Holding it in the palm of one holding it in the palm of one hand, the king undoes the latch and lifts the lid. 
He pauses. I was on the brink of tears and you said orphan moment and I burst out laughing. <laughs> I mean, I'm not wrong. <laughs> I just like to bully thick Tommy. He's very bullyable. Alright. Let's get to this reaction with Technoblade and this flower crown, huh? I want to see Bedrock Bros. Inside that box sits a wooden crown made of fresh yellow flowers. It's not perfectly made. There are s- Oh. <laughs> First time chatter, Nighting Wolf. New here, number little already. Hey. Thanks, King. Welcome to the stream. Uh, where did I leave off? Oh. It's not perfectly made. There are stems sticking out at certain parts. A few flowers missing some petals. But that's what makes the crown so much better, in Tommy's opinion. It's evidence of his work. It's proof that he made it. He spent time on it. Not anyone else with more steady and knowing hands. Him. He made this crown. When I was small, I used to make these for my father, the late king. He was uh, always very proud to have them. He wore them even during court, until all the petals died and turned dry. Tommy speaks fondly, clasping his hands together and fidgeting with his thumbs. I thought... Since you are a king, a proper one, you would like it too. It's certainly less heavy than most crowns. <laughs> Funnily enough, this king doesn't wear a crown. Tommy isn't sure why. But one rumor he's heard is that he's waiting until he has all the lands in the world, so that when he is crowned, he's crowned as the one true king. Maybe this crown, fragile and without value, will be seen as an insult. A subtle demand for Techno to take his crown already and stop his hunger for power. Maybe Tommy's made a horrible mistake. But as the king reaches into the box and touches at the petals of the flowers, he thinks maybe not. Are you not a king? Tommy blinks. He made a noise of confusion. You said I am a king. A proper one. Are you not a proper one? He asks Tommy this carefully. And Tommy thinks like it sounds like a scolding. Tommy lowers his head, digging the nail of his thumb into the curve of his hand. I was crowned only a few weeks ago. So you are not a proper king. It's said like a declaration for all to hear and accept. Tommy's face burns with shame, but within his heart there's relief. Finally, he can admit it. Finally, he can pass the crown on. It's dishonorable to say, but Tommy doesn't want this crown. He may be the heir to the throne, the only cherished son of his father, but he wasn't ready. Now he doesn't think he'll ever be ready. I'm not, Tommy murmurs. I'm sorry, he wants to say, but he doesn't need to apologize to the king. He doubts the man would care, because that apology is not for him. The king looks over the crown of flowers once more. He looks down at Tommy, looks past towards his people, who all stare back with anger, even with the fear running through. For all the efforts Tommy made, he cannot stop them from taking revenge if it's the worst, if the worst is to happen. Technoblade knows that look in all their eyes. It's a threat, a warning. Hurt him and we will raise hell, they say. Kill him and we will not stop fighting until every last heart has stopped beating. What beautiful devotion. What love. Techno knows loyalty, but most of it is won from respect. And if not respect, then fear. Never has he seen such fierce love for such a tiny ruler. One day, far in the future, when his forces have reached the ends of the world, Technoblade will have to rule. He'll have the empire he so craved, the power he wanted. But he will not have devotion. It'll be there. It'll exist. But it won't be enough. He cannot inspire that sort of love. Not to that amount he needs. But this little king can. Then I think it'd do well for you to step down, Technoblade says. And Tommy reaches his hands up to the crown on his head, slipping it over his hair and lifting it up to Techno. Technoblade falters for a fraction of a second, quietly pleased at how quickly the king or er, the kid gave the crown over. He nearly expected some sort of argument or a struggle of pride, but no. There was no hesitation just acceptance. This child knew he wasn't going to keep the crown anyway. With one hand still holding the box up, 
Techno takes the crown from Tommy's shaking hands. He throws it to the side, letting it land in the dirt. Tommy's eyes stick to it as it rolls and settles. And then he stares down at his feet, his shoulders trembling. Techno pays it no mind. He reaches into the box and pulls out the flower crown, holding it gingerly within his fingers. He holds the box out, and one of his men quickly takes it from him. Now with both hands, the king holds the crown made of flowers before him, inspecting it closely and pressing his thumb against the petals. Tommy wonders if he's going to rip it up. Maybe he'll throw it to the ground, too. Maybe he'll put it on Tommy's head and tell him the flowers are as short-lasting as his reign. Oh, that was a great line. Oh my god. Technoblade does, the Technoblade does none of this. He lifts the flowers up to his hair and places the crown on his head. He adjusts it, lowers his hands, and then lifts his chin as if that crown is something to wear with pride. Tommy's people stare with shock and grief. It's a terrible parallel, standing before them. It's just like the, with the late king before, so proud to have something from his son. Now it is a warlord with his, with his thoughts unknown, appreciating something he shouldn't even care for. Tommy stares up at the king with wide eyes, so entirely surprised that he stops shaking from fear. He's just held in pure shock, mostly confusion, a look of bafflement stuck on his face. Techno looks down at him and smiles with amusement. I'll accept your gift, Technoblade says, and Tommy's eyes light up. And your turns. The mood lifts with it, all of the people sharing glances of stunned relief. But I have terms of my own. There comes back the dread. In one crushing wave, Tommy stays with that bright look, but he presses his lips tightly together with apprehension. His curls, his, he curls his hands into fists at his side. There is a fire in his heart now. He didn't think he had any chance of securing any sort of victory, but now, he, but now that he's been given an opening, he's taking it with both hands. He's arguing for it. He'll be stubborn for it now that he knows it's possible. The king named for the blood he spilled is wearing his crown made of flowers. If that is possible, then surely safety for his people is possible as well. You won't be king anymore, Technoblade orders, and Tommy nods firmly. He expected that much. You're going to be a prince, but not of this kingdom. Tommy feels his heart squeeze with worry as confusion fills his head. Not of this kingdom? Where else would he go? It's not that... It's not as if there are any kings that can take him, for they're all dis destined to die at the king's sword. You're going to be the prince of my kingdom. My empire. <gasps> Hi, Joe Beanie. Hello. Yes, it's Bedrock Bros. <laughs> Tommy holds his breath. His heart falls, then lifts, then sits frozen with a tense panic. What? He chokes out. You're going to be the prince. Techno repeats easily, like this is set in stone and all everyone has to do is get with the program and accept it. Your people will still be yours, but you won't be just theirs anymore. You'll be of the Empire. Tommy breathes in. He stares at the man's face, looking for any hint of a lie, a joke, a cruel trick. Technoblade stares back with an impassive expression, the, cr the flower crown still sitting on his head, his men behind him looking to be in shock. Everyone seems to be in shock. Techno's men adapt with a new decision, for they know well not to hesitate in agreeing with what the king wants, and they bow their heads with a new respect. Tommy sees the action, and he goes to take a step back, but his feet feel rooted to the floor. He can't quite move. But I... Tommy tries to think of what to say. It dawns on him that he can't very well argue. This is an incredible offer. Much better than being stripped of his titles and thrown into a far-off land where he won't make trouble. At least with this, he will still be able to protect his people. He will be able to be a prince. He will still have some sort of power. I see, Tommy says, and he tries to make it sound calm, but there's still a trace of choked panic in his voice. He looks back up at the flowers on the king's head, and the sight soothes him. It's a reminder of his father, of his kind presence. And he thinks if his father were here right now, he'd encourage him to be brave. Technoblade reaches forward and rests a hand on Tommy's shoulder. Tommy tenses up with it, frozen with fear. Techno only makes him turn around towards his own people, his own kingdom. Open your gates, he says, and Tommy makes a jerky nod. 
He's escorted. He's escorted back. Or what? He's escorted forward by Techno's hand. I will have my men settle in, and we will talk more in detail. And we will talk in more detail. By the end of this week, I'll have. I'll have to be continuing on my way. He squeezes his hand back around the back of Tommy's neck, and Tommy's breath stutters in his lungs. You will be coming with me. Oh, well, but, but that's the end? Oh my gosh. Wait, that was so good. I was so enamored with it that I didn't even realize we were close to the end. Oh my gosh. Let's read the notes. Technoblade's thought process is purely, ah, I need an heir anyway. Not that I'm ever stepping down, but if I make this kid the rum's favorite, they'll all be much more loyal to me because then my name will be loved through him. But what he failed to take into account is that he is now a dad, and now he's going to have to be a dad, and Tommy has doomed him. He's doomed him! He's going to make Technoblade have a heart. What? But not like a heart that as in morals, but like now he's going to be soft for this kid who wasn't supposed to be his son, just like a way to win over the people. He's going to spoil Tommy Run. He's going to be holding Tommy like, I don't even care about him, honestly. While also going, if anyone looks at him in a mean way, I'm removing their eyes. What's that, Tommy? You want a dog? All right, someone get me an army of hounds. <laughs> Sir Candace's notes are the best. Ah, Bedrock Bros. Fun stuff. Thanks for leaving. Please leave. Comment. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Boop. Kudos. This is also one shot. Wax you. One shot. Uh, what is this? A <laughs> uh, part two? Ha 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 ha. Oh, this one isn't completed. It's okay. It's 4K words. We'll still read chapter one. Ooh. Ha ha ha. It was so good. I know, it was really good. I can't believe that took me like five ever to freaking read. <gasps> Get Sid, you're not dead. One shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I took a bite of my cereal. ASMR. Nom nom nom. You enjoy that, guys? Ha! <laughs> she fell asleep. <laughs> my friend asked me for inspiration i said yet when you're obsessed you read it unfinished so yep literally i can't spell what the muffin when an ending popped up on the playlist, I was about to break down crying. Dude, that part was like kind of emotional. This is why I love my lore playlist. Okay, it was so good. I know, and now I'm excited to see what's next. All right, so these tags, so yeah, same thing. Warlord, Prince Tommy, Possessive Technoblade, Dark Technoblade, Angst, 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 oh, mmm. <laughs> Wiggles my fingers in joy. <laughs> Character study, I mean, I think I mean I'm just flushing other dynamic, not gonna lie. They're gonna be a family, but oh, it's a hill. They are family, though. Tommy it needs a hug. One day he'll get it. Oh, Bro, love me some angst? Me too. This is me eating angst. Ah! It's delicious. Julie fingers. Wow. My phalanges. I literally look so anime from this angle. Like, I just ripped my hair out with my glasses. Ow. Anyway. Bum, bum, bum. Whenever you say angst, you should play the vine boom. Okay. Angst. <laughs> Man, I love angst. <laughs> oh my 
my god. Wait. That's so funny. Guys, clip this. Man, I do love reading angst. <laughs> Anime boss music plays. Now that I don't have. I do have this though. This is my anime boss music. Ha! Ready to get your ass beat? Hit the Able Sisters! Du, du, du. Ooh, angst! <laughs> okay, back to the reading. I'm distracting. I'm literally so bad. <clears throat> All right, what time is it? We're making really good time with my schedule, so this is wonderful. All right. Let's get into it. Now, if this ever does get updated, I will read it. Because I want to know what happens. Alright. Part 2 of The Flower Prince. The Things That You Have Won by Sir Cantus. Leave them. Techno waves his hands out, hand out in a dismissive manner. And the prince just laughs, closing his eyes and gathering the flowers in his lap again. You don't need them. Of course I need them. How else do I make you more crowns? Tommy answers. But it's hard to hear him. And all Techno sees is the moving of his lips. Or a continuation for a crown for love. Technoblade settles into Tommy's kingdom. And Tommy is ever so loved by all around him. See, that makes me happy. I hate it when like Tommy's like a young ruler. And then everyone, everyone hates him. Like, oh my gosh, your dad was so much better. But he's dead now. <laughs> Like, shut up. Be nice to the kid. What did he ever do to you? You rudy pants. <clears throat> Anywho. Okay. Everyone protect Tommy. Literally any editor ever. There is a painful familiarity in walking down the street like this, with someone so much stronger beside him. The guards keep keeping their security with the common people calling their names and throwing flowers into the air. It makes Tommy's eyes burn with tears and his heart squeeze with grief as he looks and yells and waves back at them. He catches what flowers he can, piles them all into his arms like that's the only place they're meant to be. He ignores the man at his side, if only because habit keeps telling him that the person in the corner of his eye is the soothing presence of his father, and he can't bear to let his memory be broken with truth. Or with the truth, sorry. If he looks up, he will see a king with a crown made of flowers. Only a month prior, that description belonged to someone else he, ad he adored. Now it belonged to a stranger whose eyes are too sharp, too harsh. Better to lie to himself for an hour more and keep what little norma normalcy he can have while still a prince of his kingdom. My prince, the people cry, happy to have him back within the kingdom walls and not slain by the armies that rest outside. My prince, our prince, they scream, calling for his attention, wishing to see his smile again while it is still safe. Flowers continue to be thrown into the sky, landing down at Tommy's feet. He laughs wholeheartedly at the petals being kicked around. He smiles at the never-ending tradition of flowers being given in the name of love. When Tommy was younger, smaller, still light enough to be carried in the king's arms like a baby. He remembers the flowers being thrown then. They were an occasional thing, a few roses, a few daisies, loose petals thrust out towards the king and his son. They were never in this sort of magnitude, never so much. Tommy can't take another, Tommy can't take a single step without at least five more flowers falling upon his path. His stubborn soul won't let him stop trying to pick each one up. What Tommy doesn't know is that all these flowers were collected in preparation for the worst. All the people knew the inevitable fate coming when the Emperor of Blood was bound for their kingdom. They knew it was set in stone when the prince insisted he'd go out to offer surrender peacefully. All of these flowers that were taken from gardens until the dirt lay bare, all these flowers that were brought within the shops, or bought within the shops until the shelves went empty, they were to prepare for a mass mourning. But now with the prince still walking happily through their streets, with the king of blood wearing a crown of flowers beside him, with a lack of an attack upon their walls, 
The message is clear. They will not need to lose a royal child today. Peace was made. So the people cheer and celebrate with bone-crushing relief, screaming for their young prince and crying for the king who has, who has spared him. They hold their hands out as if they can grab the conqueror's cape and spill their gratitude at his feet, as if they can take the prince's faded face in theirs and wipe any lasting tears that he might have shed while in fear. The flowers in Tommy's arms overflow and tumble back down onto the same stone streets they were thrown upon. Tommy stumbles in his steps, laughing with a bubbly joy, leaning down and trying hard to pick them up. As he crouches low, the crowd only pelts him with more flowers, and by the time he stood straight and gathered what he dropped, there's twice as many on the ground. The guards falter in their steps, Tommy trying to keel- Keel? Wow. Tommy trying to kneel down again to pick up more. The king turns, having expected Tommy to return to return at his side already. He sees Tommy on his knees, sweeping roses and peonies and tulips into his lap with a determined furrow of his brow, and he gives a short sigh that can't be heard over the roar of the crowds. Your Highness, he calls, and when Tommy's head doesn't lift, he calls again, louder than the shouts of love trying to be heard by the prince. Your Highness! Tommy looks up. He looks up, his smile wide, another laugh bursting from his throat with such joy that it shakes his shoulders. His eyes are wide and only here, within the road and within the walls of their, ki of their guards keeping the people back. Can it be seen that there are tears brimming at the edges of his eyes? I can't carry them, Tommy cries out, smiling still, the people calling his name, my prince, my prince, our prince. I, I can't, there's, there's so many. Leave them. Tommy, to Tommy, techno. <clears throat> Leave them. Techno waves his hand out in a dismissive manner, and the prince just laughs, closing his eyes and gathering the flowers in his lap again. You don't need them. Of course I need them. How else will I make you more crowns? Tommy answers, but it's hard to hear him, and all Techno sees is the movement of is the moving of his lips. He frowns at the boy, glancing down the road and seeing how his men all waited up ahead. The castle is still quite a walk away, and their path is littered with countless flowers. The sheer number of them is staggering, sending a clear message of devotion, and for that reason alone, Techno's given no issue and letting Tommy slow them down with trying to pick up each flower. It is endearing to the people to see their prince react so earnestly to their gifts, and if the people are content, then it makes a good deal of things easier. He needs them. Yeah, he needs them. He needs to make his, his, his new dad flower crowns. <laughs> <coughs> But there is a point to it. Tommy can't carry all these flowers. It would be impossible. And Techno is growing impatient, tired from the ride here. Walking over to the prince's side, Techno reaches down with the intention of pulling Tommy to his feet and urging him along. Let him keep the, f let him keep the flowers he already has and let them continue on their way. But Tommy only looks up at him with that same glassy look in his eyes, and he shoves flowers against Techno's chest with such conviction that Techno automatically reaches to keep them from falling. Make yourself useful, Tommy says, gathering up more flowers in almost, an almost frantic manner. You and your men! He takes another armful of roses and peonies and goes to the nearest guard of Techno's, forcing the flowers into their hands. Don't drop them, he insists, and then he waves at the people, a burst of cheers yelling back. Technoblade steps back, unsure of what to do with the flowers in hands, or in hand, and watches as he, as Tommy runs ahead, swiping flowers off the road and putting them into his hands of his men. He puts piles into their arms, throws petals onto the metal plating over their shoulders, sticks the stems into the crevices of their armor. Since the beginning of Techno's conquest, his armies have always been a symbol of oncoming war and promised blood. Seeing them stand here, covered in flowers, well, it doesn't make them appear harmless, but it certainly poses a strange sight, like a bloody dagger being showered in flower petals. Techno wonders if the prince is trying to subtly smooth the transition of power, or if he's honestly this earnest about his people's gifts. It might be the latter, even if that's hard to imagine for a man like Techno. Your Majesty! Tommy calls, waving Techno forward, and his people all echo him, raising their hands up and calling out to Technoblade in an effort to get him to turn to them. All their eyes see that familiar flower crown on his head, and so they see the prince's love, so pure and so out of place, but given forward to a king regardless. This is not their king, 
but who would they be to question their prince's choice? Your Majesty, they call, making Tommy smile and laugh as he looks back at Technoblade with another wave of his arm. Your Majesty, our prince, your Majesty. Technoblade carries forward from where he had been frozen for a moment too long, following Tommy's relentless efforts in collecting each and every flower. He soaks in the cheers of the people, soaks in the adoration in place of where there, were there would usually be fear. This sort of walk into a new kingdom under his rule is unfamiliar, but not unwelcome. It is victory still, just a different, more softer type. He would not protest at getting used to it. This is so wholesome. I'm gonna die. Tommy insists on putting the flowers all around the castle when they arrive. With the crowds of people behind them, kept outside the castle doors, Techno is tempted to refuse him. But there really isn't anywhere to put the flowers, and it would only cause bitterness amongst the people if, if it comes out that Techno had them all burned. Better to let Tommy continue to lead along this trail of easy welcome, while Technoblade gets his control of the kingdom better settled in. He allows Tommy to do what he likes, and while the prince runs off with a number of Techno's guards carrying along his flowers, Technoblade parts ways and heads towards the throne room. Man's really say, what did this child do to me? Why is my heart soft? Tom, it's just the Tommy effect. Let's be real. His curiosity always makes him go there first, in every kingdom, in every castle that he takes. He needs to see what this kingdom considers proper enough for their royalty. He needs to see if it is grand enough to quell the vicious hunger that sits in his heart. That gaping ache that he can't ever fill. He sees the throne in this room sees a wooden chair engraved in with bits of gold, and he's left with a sour disappointment on his tongue, the hunger growing ever fiercer. It is not enough. It's not nearly enough. It's never enough. He walks up to the throne, his men already stationed along the bannered walls. He stands before it, eyes dragging over the golden designs, and his hands reach out to touch the arm of the chair. His fingertips graze along the edge of it for no more than a second before he pulls his hand back. Oh. Blueberry, stop. I know what you're <laughs> I know what you're singing. His fingertips graze along the edge of it for no more than a second before he pulls his hand back, lips curling into a scowl with a terrible, quick passing fury in his chest. He grits his teeth so hard it may crack a tooth. And then he rests his hand back on the back to his side forcing a slow breath out with better thoughts, like how he can make a new throne entirely when this is all said and done. He imagines the sight then, nothing of wood, nothing of silver, but only gold, shimmering, gleaming gold, priceless jewels embedded into it so that all who come before the throne know that whoever sits upon it is something of worth, someone with power, influence. He'll be there one day. It's a guaranteed thing. And he can almost feel the polished metal under his palms now, forever to his keep. He'll be the king who conquered the entire world, the first to ever do such a thing. Gold will be his crown, heavy but beautiful. His fingers touch at the top of his head as he imagines it, and he brushes against the petals already sitting there. He stops, forgetting the weight on his head, and he reaches to pull the flower crown off his hair, inspecting it again. He took it to make a point to accept the prince's kingdom and the prince himself, but it did well to win the people's favor as well. There's not much more use for it now. Now, it's only a matter of speaking to the nobles and the prince's old council, and Techno has his own men to keep them in check. He has his influence, has his name. The crown was to win over love, like how the prince will win over the empire soon enough. But he doesn't need love right now. He needs respect. Even with this thought, Technoblade decides to put it back on his head anyway, to wear it until it either falls apart or withers away. He'll indulge himself. He quite likes having a crown. There'll be, there's been times he's even stolen a few from other kings before, but he never wore them for more than a day, because they weren't his true crown. This one is no different. He'll wear it to keep the people's favor, to keep the prince's favor. Then he'll discard it when the sun sets. Why are y'all singing? Why y'all rickrolling each other in the chat? What happened? I looked away for two seconds. I cannot believe you, Muffinheads. How, how dare you? 
<laughs> Y'all are fun. Y'all are cute. We're having a moment. You know what? Slay. <laughs> you know what? Slay. You want to rickroll me? Slay. <laughs> ah. Dang, I don't want him to throw away the crown. That's kind of a... Kind of a bitch move. Don't do it, Techno Blade. Don't do it. You're too cool. Do, 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 do. Let us live, Julie. I am letting you live. Pop off. Y'all do what you want. <clears throat> Pepper and Teal are a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, do y'all have like a- are y'all like British duo or something? <laughs> um, th I'm so funny. I'm so funny, guys. Techno's gonna be like, I'm gonna throw it out tomorrow and it never happens. Teal's the British one? Yeah, but I've never heard Pepper talk, so, I mean, you never know. You could be gaslighting everyone to think you're not British. Yep, I'm gonna let y'all fight with that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue reading. We're halfway through this already. <clears throat> A quiet echo of footsteps rings out through the room. They're rushed, soft-sounding, and so Techno turns, expecting not one of his soldiers, but someone from Tommy's old council. He's correct in his expectations. He finds a man wearing fine-looking clothes, with black hair and a well-trimmed beard. He stands before the throne, shoulders squared, lips pressed in an upset frown. "'Where's the prince?' he asks, almost yelling with it. Techno's hands curl into fists at his sides. One of the guards steps down from their spot, a hand heavy on the handle of their sword. "'You speak to the one true king,' they said. "'You will address him as, "'I'll come whenever he wants, if only he can tell me where the prince is.' Technoblade gives a ghost of a smile, anger digging into the edges of it, a deep irritation shown in the crinkle underneath his eyes. He looks away to take in the sight of the throne again, and as he does, there's the sound of clinking armor, then the sound of someone being struck and falling to the ground. A low gro groan of pain reaches Techno's ears. He still doesn't turn back around. The man is hit again with a grunt of pain, then he's hit again and again and again. Techno keeps counting the amount of times he's struck, and when he counts to ten, only then does he give his attention back to the man. Back to the man. He's being held up by Techno's shul- shul- blah, 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 soldier by the front of his shirt, his face bloody and his knees to the ground. The soldier's hand hovers midair, as if ready to swing down again, but they keep a careful eye on Techno for his input. Technoblade nods his head to the side, and the soldier drops the man, going back to their post. Please. The man spits blood onto the ground, pushing himself back to sit back on his legs. Your Majesty, tell me if the prince is all right. Technoblade raises his eyebrows, eyes drifting around the room. He notes the banners on the walls, in need of being replaced. They're the wrong color. Did you not hear the cheering in the streets? Yes. Or see the crown I wear? It is quite a meaningful crown. All his. Just because you chose not to kill him now. Does not mean you will treat him well, the man huffs, reaching a shaking hand to his bleeding nose. Technoblade smiles, more honesty, er, more honestly than before, more amused. Now you have your men spill my blood, and I may have them behead you for your next insolence. Oh, I read that wrong. And I may have them behead you next for your insolence. Will you do the same to our prince? The man asks, lifting his chin high blood dripping down past his lips. Techno pauses at the tone of his voice, determined and relentless. I care not what you do to me. Kill me now and put my head on a spike for all I care, but my life is to, to my prince, and I have to know if you mean to harm him. There it is again. Devotion. Beautiful, burning love and absolute loyalty, even in the fact of severe punishment, even in the presence of someone like Technoblade. He craves such a thing. He wants to demand to have it right here. Have this man swear his life to him, not the prince. But he knows that would never work. You cannot win this sort of devotion with threats and fear. What does it matter? Techno asks, stepping, down, stepping away from the throne with his hands clasped behind his back. He couldn't do a thing regardless. If I chose to have him executed tomorrow morning, you would only be able to watch. That is true. The man chuckles bitterly. 
and he narrows his eyes up at the king like he's capable of giving a threat to the man. But if you did do such a thing, this entire castle would begin an uprising before his body even goes cold. Techno grins wide with an urge to laugh, and it would only result in failure. You would all die screaming and join your prince in the grave. The man freezes still, the fire in his eyes faltering. He swallows, wiping at his bleeding face again, wincing away with a shaking, with a shaking of fear in his shoulders. I do not come on just my behalf, your majesty. I speak for the entirety of this castle, every person in the staff, every advisor within the council. We wish to make a simple agreement with our new ruler. What agreement is there to be made? We were all just meant to be ruled. Technoblade questions, walking past the man with an air of annoyance, already bored with this constant pattern of people asking something of him. You want to demand something of me? Be honest. Fine, the man yells at his back, twisting around in where he sits on his knees. We ask for you to be kind to Tommy. We ask you to give him mercy. Tommy. Techno stops in his steps and takes in the name, and all the implications of it being used. Truly, the people here must be close with the royals, if they're so willing to call the prince that. It's a touching prospect, yet also an issue. It shows disrespect to use the prince's name like that, so casually, so easily, like the name is theirs to speak. Technoblade can't tolerate that sort of thing, especially if this prince is now his prince, his heir to the Golden Throne. He looks over his shoulder with a glare. The man bows his head toward down towards the floor, a hand held over his nose. His highness, Techno stresses the word, pushing the message across for the man to be mindful of his words, already has my mercy. If he didn't, he would have been dead by now. So don't waste my time with your begging. It's unnecessary. And with that, Techno leaves the man so that he may go explore the castle and find somewhere to take his rest before he starts court. Across the halls in another section of the castle, flowers sit scattered beside pathways and doorways, like a breadcrumb trail left behind by one persistent prince. Tommy kneels down on cold stone, arranging the flowers in front of one of the royal chambers. With the way he places them in front of the door, it makes it difficult to head inside without trampling them, but it's all right, for no one has gone inside this room since the night his father died. He was told when he was smaller that this room was to become his when he became king. Now such a thing will never happen because Tommy refused to go inside after he was crowned, and now he will leave this castle entirely to be someone else's prince. All the belongings inside this room, all the clothes and papers and trinkets, it will stay the way his father left them. It'll stay undisturbed, frozen in time, forever a piece of him living on. Maybe one, maybe one day Tommy will forget parts of his father. Maybe one day he'll forget the sound of his voice, the picture of his face, the warmth of his hands. Maybe he... If he comes back here and comes into this room, he'll be able to remember. <clears throat> Hi, Kit. Everyone hearts in chat for Kit Sidge. They're not dead. Yay! <laughs> oh my gosh, Blueberry's like popping off. What is it? Is this karaoke night for you, Blueberry? I'm so sorry. <laughs> Stop apologizing. I already said it's fine. We got to read, we got to read uh, some Sir Cantus fix. Yeah! Hearts in chat. Hearts in chat. Yippee! <laughs> ah. Tasty. Oh, look at all the hearts. Oh my gosh. I'm late. What are we reading? Hi, not quite boop. Uh, we are reading a fic by Sir Cantus. This is actually part two of a series. But here's a link for it if you want to read along. We're like getting close to being done with it but that's okay because you will have the vod speaking of vods uh social plugs vods boom i love my stream deck so there's a the vods channel we are so close to 100 subscribers on my vods channel all right let's Ooh. let's continue reading we read this line, I'll read it again. Maybe, if he comes back here and comes into this room, he'll be able to remember. Tommy gives a shaky exhale, lifting his hand up from the ground and reaching out to press his fingertips against the wood of the door. 
No one will go inside. All his people loved his father. They mourn him just the same as him. And if Tommy isn't here to take the room, then there's no reason to go inside. It will stay closed, like the crypts below the castle, sacred and safe. He pulls his hand away and rearranges some of the flowers again, shifting them for a minute more, before he realizes he's just stalling and keeping himself here. He forces himself to stand on shaky legs and takes a step back, a step away. He means to continue on then, to call Techno's men along and keep adding flowers to the corners of the hallways, but he can't help but linger and stare at his father's door. For so many nights, he used to come here for comfort. I think my roommate was just blowing her. <laughs> I think my roommate's blowing her nose. <laughs> Sorry if you can hear that. Um, to call Techno's men along and keep adding flowers to the corners of the hallways. But he can't help but linger and stare at his father's door. For so many nights, he used to come here for comfort. He used to knock upon that wood, asking for his dad to hold him close. Now he'll never be able to do it again. Now he's a child no longer. He wants more than anything to have his dad wrap him up in his arms, to protect and love him like he's nothing more than a beloved child, with no responsibilities nor weight of duty on his shoulders yet. But those days are gone. Tommy became king, or blah, blah, blah. Tommy became the king. Like the Lion King. I'm out of water. It's okay, we're almost done. Ah, hit the mic, sorry. Tommy became the king, and now he's a prince of a fast-growing empire. He wonders what that entails, and he supposes he'll be informed soon enough. That man, the king, or is it emperor? Oh, he still doesn't know what to call him. That man with his flower crown. He seemed to have a plan in mind for Tommy. Whatever it is, Tommy will carry it out to the best of his abilities. He moves on, tearing himself away from his father's door to continue down the hall. Techno's men follow at his heels, flowers still piled up in their armored arms. Tommy looks at the amount they Tommy looks at the amount they have and gives a thoughtful click of his tongue. Where else to put these? There are more or less go his going away g gift, his last touch around the castle, so he must be pre precise about it, decisive. Where else do we put these? He asks the guards, because he's out of ideas, and maybe they'll have something better than just throwing them around the halls and having the place look like the aftermath of a holiday in the streets. They don't give, or they don't give any answers. One of them gives a half-hearted shrug, which Tommy appreciates, but it doesn't do much to fix their dilemma. He pauses in his steps to think harder on the matter, and a brilliant idea comes over him. Firm room, he mutters, and then he turns on his feet and sprints right past the guards, darting down the hall. The throne room! The throne room! He calls out, and the guards scramble to follow after him, trying hard not to drop a single flower. They run until Tommy loses his breath, and then they briskly walk with Tommy gasping out for air, stubborn and getting to where he wants to be. The soldiers themselves don't seem to have a broken... <laughs> the soldiers themselves don't seem to have broken a sweat in running halfway across the castle, to which Tommy is both impressed and annoyed by. They also haven't dropped a single flower in their arms for which Tommy is only grateful. He takes a red rose from one of their piles and holds it gingerly in between his fingers as they approach the throne room. The doors are wide open with plenty of company streaming in and out, carrying supplies and fabrics and tools in their hands. For a moment, Tommy thinks he's missing court, everyone, gathered to get, everyone gathering together. But then he rounds the corner to look inside the room, and he realizes that it's not anything of royal importance. They're just redecorating. The familiar banners on the walls are being taken down, folded and put to the side for a servant to carry away. They're being replaced with new, brighter banners, deep red, with a symbol of a sword sewn into the middle. Tommy stares at the color of it, at the jarring change of such a thing. Then he realizes he might as well get used to the red, for that is now his kingdom's color. That's his color. One of the servants slips away from all the movement of things being set up, and they bow at Tommy's side, catching his attention and making him turn away from the banners. Are you looking for the king, your highness? They ask, eyes kept to the floor. Oi! Tommy's heart jumps with hope, then falls with grief. The king is his father no longer. The king is that man, the conqueror of the world. No, I'm not. They lift their head with a questioning look. Then... 
is there anything I can assist you with? Tommy looks back at his little group of soldiers, looking so out of place, carrying piles of pretty colored flowers. Well, we have these flowers. <laughs> and that's the end of that chapter. Wait, let's read the notes. Techno with literally everything he does around Tommy. This is a tactical decision. This is purely for my own benefit. This will definitely not result in anything more because I care about nothing except my own victory. Tommy is Tommy. Techno. I feel compelled to do irrational things. <laughs> I love the slow burn family. I love it when they get to build a relationship and slowly care about each other and become family. Rah! I'm so silly. So yes, the last fic in this series was supposed to be a one shot. The end all. <laughs> The finale, the finale to the brain rot, and then the brain rot came in and left stage, from left stage with a bat, a metal chair, and a gun. So, whoops, and we leave a comment and read everything. I leave kudos. So yeah, that's the flower prince, and we will be awaiting for a new chapter soon enough. And this is like perfect timing to end stream, guys. I hope. You enjoyed that, because I know I sure did. Oh my goodness. So, Kit and I will reschedule <laughs> for Tom for uh, the Golden Phoenix. It's no longer going to be called Tommy Tuesday, because I am no longer available on Tuesdays, on Tuesday evenings. I have super long work days that day, and so does Kit. So, we're going to reschedule. It might be Wilbur Wednesday. So, just um, keep your schedules open. Let's go sell this right away with past midnight. Yes, go go to sleep. Go to sleep, 19. Uh, 19 Wolf. Thank you so much for joining the stream. I really appreciated you coming in. It was great to see you. Here comes the brain rot with a metal chair. So true. So true. Let me put on some new music. But yeah, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your night. But guys, remember, you are loved. You're valid. You're worthy. I almost forgot my own intro. And I love you guys very, very much. But yes, Love you guys. Have a good rest of your night, okay?